Over the years, I've neglected the GameCube. In high school, it was my favorite console. The amount of hours I spent playing multiplayer games like Nightfire and Def Jam Vendetta are immeasurable. Let's not even get into the slew of single-player games exclusive to the platform. Later in its life, we saw the addition of the Game Boy Player, a device that gave you access to the entirety of Nintendo's handheld legacy. I love this little box and everything that it offers. The advent of HD TVs has been anything but kind to this little box. For those of you that regularly tune into my channel, it's been a constant struggle of mine to capture quality footage for my videos using original hardware through HDMI. Of course, you could just buy the official component cables made by Nintendo. The downside? They range upwards of $250. These are rare to come by in the wild and have been hard to replicate throughout the years. If the price doesn't send you packing, then the idea of buying used cables with an unknown condition should be concerning. Another viable option is using the Wii backwards compatibility with component cables. This also has its own setbacks. The image quality takes a big hit, you have no access to the Game Boy Player, and again, I need an HDMI out for my capture device, so it's not an option for me to consider. While Eon have stepped up to the plate and took a swing at the open source GC video code, this plug and play device, yes, I said plug and play device, utilizes the digital port via HDMI on the back of certain GameCubes to provide a progressive scan image and audio through one cable. It's not quite HD, but 480p is a nice step up in image quality. Since GCHD outputs through HDMI, those with the CRT may want to pick up an HDMI to component converter. I've also heard they're creating a solution in-house, so keep your eyes peeled on their site. Every bit of me wants to crack this open and see what's inside, but I'll hold off. This isn't that stupid Wii 2 HDMI I reviewed a few videos ago. So, let's get into performance. Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Get ready. What better fit than for the King of the Monsters to start this off? The game looks fantastic and the footage pretty much speaks for itself. I was comfortable enough with stretching this to 300% its size just to bring you that silly montage. Point is, it's more than serviceable. When compared against the line doubling mode, you won't want to go back. All the little things on the ground and the background buildings are just more pronounced. It's not really HD, and it's not not HD. If anything, Progressive Scan provides a sort of anti-aliasing effect. So, the effect isn't always right up in your face. As you can see, the line of the ship and the ring have smoother edges. So does the shoreline and the cave's entrance. Now I know it's a few small little things. All of it added up helps boost the visual fidelity for modern displays. The jagged edges are severely reduced, but things are a lot smoother overall. Titles like Soul Calibur 2 receive some pretty impressive enhancements. Aside from the more defined look of the game, it also gets rid of the motion blur, which I didn't even know bothered me until it was gone. While some people like the effect, I find that it negatively impacts quality way too much. Certain games receive minor quality improvements on progressive mode, so keep your expectations in check. It's not always going to be super impressive. No fault on the device though, it's the console limitations. Or maybe the lack of understanding from the developers. Which is evident when you take into consideration most games don't even support progressive mode at all. The line doubling mode picks up the slack by reducing the motion blur. Introducing scan lines will boost the results a bit and takes better advantage of the line doubling. While some games may look better at base level without it, the overall benefit is there and the two functions go hand in hand. Using the stock GBA disc to access the hardware won't yield the best look. Most of the pixels are smudged and you'd be hard pressed to find a single square. Even the dithering effect on A Link to the Past seems just a little off. I've heard you can achieve a much sharper look using custom software. I don't have one of those fancy loaders, not yet at least. There was never a need for me to fire up GBA games post CRT. I would always just emulate to get the best look, so no fault on the device here, only Nintendo. Alright, so here's the long and short of everything. If there was a big patch for the GC video's code, you wouldn't be able to update the product. So I wonder how, or if, they're going to handle this. 
And uh, I guess it's also weird that the HDMI comes out from the side, but you can also see that it helps to remove any pressure being placed on the port, so yeah, it's not that bad. It really took a little bit of force to get the GCHD fitted properly into the back of my GameCube. I originally thought it was broken, and before giving up I gave it one final push, but after that it was much easier to take out and then insert again. The price for the GCHD weighs in about $150. I'm sure it'll come down in time, but for now they aren't buying enough stock to bring down their prices pretty much, you know? And finally, obviously, you're here watching the video, so not only is their product on the market, it also functions as intended while offering an enjoyable presentation to a console being sorely underutilized. Another big thanks to Ryan from Castlemania Games. He messaged me and asked if I'd like to check out the GCHD. And of course I want to check out a new piece of tech and break it down. He was also generous enough to hook me up with a discount code for you guys to use on his site. So if you want to pick up the GCHD, use code Rewind at checkout and you'll get 10% off. There's also a ton of other stuff over on the site, so why not go browse it and click around? And a very special thanks to my Patreons. If you guys want to join the crew and help out my channel, the link's below. My first goal is a small one, and I'd love to knock it out of the park. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching and staying to the end of this whole video. I hope you found it useful.